We're now going to turn to someone who is on the, uh, just been named on the BRW Young Rich List with an estimated wealth of over 300 million. Ruslan Kogan, founder and CEO of uh, of Kogan Technologies. We thought we'd have a chat to him about, well, about uh, about his career and his success. So often we we say that uh, sports people are wonderful, scientists are wonderful, but what about entrepreneurs, people who've built an empire out of uh, out of nothing? Nothing. G'day, Ruslan. Thank you very much for your time. G'day, James. How are you? Very good, thank you. Um, now, you began your first... Am I right in thinking you began your first business when you were about 10? Correct. What was that? Uh, it was... I was living in the Housing Commission flats in Elston Week in Melbourne, and... Uh, I, there was a golf course nearby and I used to walk past the golf course to go to tennis practice and there'd be, always be golf balls along the fence line that golfers had hit and were too lazy to pick up. So on the way to tennis and on the way home from tennis, I'd pick them up, wash them, put them in egg cartons and then go and sell them back to the golfers at 50 cents a ball. Now, so not a huge business, but it'd make me 20 or 30 bucks every weekend and that made me pimp of the milk bar. <laughs> and you continued to sort of uh, uh, do start run businesses through your through through your ten to twenty years of age period. Uh, yeah, look, I was always you know after that uh, I started a car wash business where you know I'd wash my parents' cars and they'd pay me five bucks to do that. Then I saw a billboard advertising a car wash place for forty bucks, so I thought, hang on a second, I'm getting ripped off here. <laughs> so. So I made business cards and went around the neighborhood, handed them out, started making appointments. And, uh, you know, I was 11 or 12 years old at the time and I had a backpack with um, a hose and a sponge and a chamois and all of that and then started to employ some of my friends and we were going around the neighborhood watch it, washing lots of people's cars and, you know, that was one of them. And then everything all the way through to a website design business through high school and a mobile phone repair business. So, you know, there was always always something going on. And what was the drive back then? Was it fun? Did you want the money? Was it uh, the desire to sort of improve yourself? Or what? Can, you, can you remember? Yeah, well, you know, my parents came to Australia with me and my sister in 1989, and they had $90 in their pocket. So uh, throughout my upbringing, any time we'd be in the supermarket and I'd point at something and say, you know, hey, I want that. Uh, my parents would always tell me to be quiet because we can't afford it. So I knew from a very young age that if I want something, I'm going to have to go and get it myself. So I guess from a from a very young age, the driver was the pocket money. But now, you know, the driver's much bigger than that. Uh, to me, the money doesn't represent what you can buy. It represents what you have achieved. So as we change... Uh, things on a global scale and make technology more affordable for everyone. It means that, you know, we've had more of a positive influence on the world and that, and that's what something like being in the BRW list represents. So it's not, it's not what you can buy, it's what you have achieved and how many lives you've enhanced. Now, after you finished school, you did a Bachelor of Business Systems Information Technology at Monash University and then in, was it 2006, began Kogan Technologies? Tell us, tell us what you did. Yeah, well, as part of my uni degree, I uh, was on a scholarship uh, which allowed me to go and study abroad for a semester. So I went to Miami uh, or the University of Miami to study there for a semester and I saw the rise of online retail there. Uh, whenever um, all the international kids would want to buy something, they'd go to Walmart, but we'd see all the local American kids just jumping online and buying it. And then I saw very quickly that uh, a small online retailer was cheaper than a Goliath like Walmart. So I kept that in the back of my head. I came back to Australia after I finished uni and I had a couple of corporate jobs at uh, GE and Accenture and I found them very boring. And then one day I was looking for a TV, went around all of the uh, retailers and even though I was earning some decent money, I couldn't afford one. Then I started researching the technology, the manufacturers and suppliers and I saw that I could get a TV to Australia for a thousand dollars that the retailers at the time were selling for three or four thousand dollars and then I researched the technology even further and I saw that even though there's thousands of TV brands out there around the world there's only four major panel manufacturers and that's Samsung, LG, Hitachi and Sharp 
So the core components in a TV are identical no matter what brand you get. It's the LCD panel which um, you know makes up the majority cost of a TV. So to me, you know, it just made perfect sense. A lot of things aligned. It's a perfect product for online retail because you've got maximum value per cubic centimetre, so it's very efficient to ship around the country. And so, you know, Kogan became the first company in Australia to start selling TVs online. And at the time, people were telling me things like, oh, you're crazy as if someone's going to buy a TV online without seeing it first. And I was telling people, you know, well, yeah, if they look at the specs side by side, if they look at the features side by side and you give them a money back guarantee, they're going to say, hang on a second, this looks like we're getting pretty much the same thing, but for a quarter of the price. And that's exactly what happened, and business took off. And and was it an up, upward t- trajectory from day one, or were there moments where you thought it was all going to fall apart? No, it's been an upward trajectory since day one. Look, oh, good. So that, th- those been, moments are obviously ahead then. <laughs> yeah, but look, there's been a lot of challenges along the way. It certainly hasn't been easy going. And one of the philosophies in our business is there is always a better way. So we've got that printed on our walls, on our computer screens, on our hoodies. All of our staff um, are taught to swim upstream, to go against the grain. And if you look at our business today, it's completely different to what it was a year ago. And a year ago, it was completely different to what it was two years ago. So we're all about constantly innovating and changing the way the supply chain works in order to bring maximum value to the consumer and make technology more affordable. And am I right? In your early days, you were uh, you, you you actually when you were dealing with companies and they'd send you brochures, you, you'd rewrite them uh, so that they were better to impress the company. Yeah. So what happened was uh, when I initially went to start the business, I had absolutely no money, so I was doing a very small trial order and running it as a pre-sale. Now China works on mass, so they're all about mass production. And they wouldn't accept my tiny order for one container of TVs uh, because companies around the world order much more than that. So, um, you know, I thought, well, what can I do to show uh, to this company that it, there's value in transacting with me? Because I think business is all about win-win scenarios, whether it's a business with their suppliers or whether it's a business with their customers. It's always about a win-win. So I thought, what can I do to turn this into a win-win? So I went and rewrote all of their marketing material, all their user manuals and brochures, translated them from Chinglish to English, made them look like very presentable Western-style documents. And I sent them back to them and I said, look, the value in transacting with me isn't in the small order of TVs that I'm about to place, but I can help you in other ways. And they replied straight away saying, you know, thank you very much, Mr. Kogan. We accept your order. And they gave nice. me an even better price. Nice. Now, when you said that the, one of the philosophies of your company is there is always a better way, that's relatively easy when, you, when you're starting because, of course, you have to do something better when you're a small company to, to compete with the big Goliaths. Now you are almost a big Goliath. How do you keep that philosophy alive? Look, it's one of the big challenges in the business, but, uh, you know, a lot of companies uh, have fluffy sounding values. So, um, you know, Enron, when you, in their head office, used to have a big sign saying honesty and integrity was their value. Mm. Now, it's very easy to create buzzwords around the value of a company, but the real values of any company are based on who you hire, fire, and promote. So we're all about ensuring that the recruitment process at Kogan is right, that we're hiring the right sort of people, that we're rewarding the right sort of people as well. So we run a complete meritocracy. I learned in the corporate world exactly what not to do with your staff. So we've had people who, you know, have had six pay rises in six months. We're all about, you know, your pay review isn't next year or every September. You're all about the value and the innovation that you add and create in the business. So you can have as many pay rises as you want as long as you present a case to the business. It's all about um, the actual value you create. We don't care what race someone is, what age they are, whether they have a uni degree or not, how old they are. All of that stuff doesn't matter. It's all the output, the innovation and all of that. And the culture internally 
is to question absolutely everything. Any staff member in the business can question any of our processes, make any suggestions and all of that sort of stuff. So that really drives innovation in the business. But like you said, it is a challenge and it's something that we plan on, you know, making better and better and better. So uh, one of the things in the business is we don't want to get overrun by all this bureaucracy that you see in larger companies. And we've managed to go uh, from, you know, only a couple employees to now over 100 employees whilst maintaining these philosophies. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, Ruslan, and congratulations on, on being on that list, not just because of the money, but as you said, because of the achievement it represents. Well done. Thank you. All the best. That's Ruslan Kogan on the BRW Young Rich List. You're on ABC Local Radio.